I founded this institute to take the risk out of love. No more uncertainty, no more wondering if you've chosen the right partner, no more divorce. We were the first to build the machines to conduct the test to make the bond of love stronger. I really want to work here. A lot of famous people study there. Really? Like who? Ginger Spice. She's my favorite. I know. How do you ever come up with an idea like this? What inspired it? I think that love is something so elusive. We cannot even analyze. We cannot, and I don't know how, why it's so difficult to fall in love right now, and especially the younger generation. And you see all of them that they're using these crazy dating apps, <laughs> and uh, they're swapping right or left with their finger and their nail in order to find the perfect match. And in general, love goes through screens and not through eyes. That's what we are also showing with this test machine, that it's uh, just one click, and then you are waiting on a, on a screen, and you are waiting for the result. And uh, people are letting their emotions and their, uh, I mean, their own feelings to just a machine to decide about them, how people are letting technology to decide about everything in their life. That's the mean thing about technology. It is taken over the world and continues to be taking over the world. You know, you can just give AI your, your idea and I'll write the script for you. Exactly, and that's what we try to say with the movie, that you cannot let an AI decide about, uh, love. about love. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately decide. I mean, if you will see how many younger people are using these dating apps, and uh, they're using them also in a way that it doesn't make sense because they're meeting somebody by just texting. Yeah. And then they're meeting a real person and uh, there is no chemistry and there is nothing, but they are already idealizing something just from text, just from a screen. And congratulations to Apple, because I didn't notice a single cell phone in this film or other levels of technology other than the microwave type thing that was there. Is that on purpose? You just wanted to limit all kinds of forms of, that we usually see in movies these days? Yes, we, uh, when we agreed with Apple, I decided to remove all the technology from the movie. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was... Uh, <laughs> because we are trying to make a comment on technology, uh, we try to keep everything in an analog way and uh, to create a goal that it's got if. So everything hap uh, takes place probably at the end of the previous century, or we don't know exactly when. It's timeless. Um, but we try to create that feeling, to give that feeling, the timeless feeling in the film, and to keep only one technological device, which is the test machine. And everybody goes there to find answers about their own feelings and their own emotions. And at the same time, everything is... I mean, the last reference of the movie is Notting Hill that people are watching in cinema, because Hugh Grant is the only one who knows what is love. <laughs> Um, and I heard that you were trying to get Hugh Grant to play the uh, Luke Wilson role. Is that true? Yes. And the day that he said no, I was in Toronto and I was walking outside from a cinema and I saw on the marquee that something else was written. And I said, OK, Hugh Grant, right now your name will go up there. I thought Luke Wilson, by the way, is great. He's he, perfect. He was, he was perfect for this role, to be honest, yes. And uh, we're very glad that we have him and not Hugh Grant, because I prefer that Hugh Grant is on the cinema. Uh, so, yes, it was, we were very lucky to have... Uh, Speaking of actors in this, so beautifully cast with Jesse Buckley, my God, and Riz Ahmed and Jeremy Allen White, who's very popular right now on The Bear. I don't think that was happening when you were making the movie. Um, he has already done the first season. He'd but, done it, had it run, had yes, people... And he was already quite uh, yeah. famous. Um, but yes, I mean, um, I, I'm very glad that we have them because Jesse always surprises me. She's great in whatever she's doing. And uh, Riz is always a chameleon uh, from playing something dramatic to something comedic. But we have never seen both of them in something romantic. Right. So I was really hoping for this romantic chemistry that they will have on screen. And I hope that we achieve that. And the movie is about her character. It's not about, uh, for sure, we are also focusing on the two other characters, but it's about her own decisions and how you can escape from a relationship that the society tells you that it's perfect and move on in your life and find something that makes you feel more real. Even when you are moving a nail and you are feeling the pain, but at the same time you are feeling something real. So sometimes you have to... You have to sacrifice something in order to find love, and love sometimes is painful, but it's something that we need so much in our life. Um, this is your first English language film. Do you uh, have any trepidation about doing a film in English, or was that always your desire to do it? 
Um, I think that even Apple's goes in Greek language is a very universal story. And I'm always trying to create stories that uh, are trying to talk about um, topics that exist forever in our life. Like, for example, um, uh, the first one that was about memory and grief, this one about love, um, and the next one I want, that I want to make is about identity, and to play with them and about how the modern society uh, has changed the way that we experience and to play in a little bit uh, also playful, silly way sometimes, a little bit funny way. But I think that in both movies there are a lot of layers to understand and to, to recognize about life and about how life is, uh, even if it's very allegorical, everything. Yeah, well, Apples, which you're referring to, was your first film, which opened the Venice Film Festival a few years ago, and Kate Blanchett was on the uh, head of the jury I think, and she saw that, and she reached out. She was became a big fan of that film. Yes, uh, I she remember. She is a producer on this film now. Yes, I remember that. I was in Venice, and she, I received the message that Kate wants to have a breakfast with me. And I said at the beginning, I said, "No, I will not go." Uh, no, 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 no. Of course, I, I was <laughs> like, I was like, that. <laughs> oh, oh, "Oh my God!" I was like, "Okay." I'm, I went for breakfast with her, and it's funny because we stayed for two hours. We didn't eat anything. And we were just talking about movies and life. And uh, we loved each other so much. And we immediately understand that we need to work. She asked me to, to do something together. And uh, we had already this project. So because we didn't have a role for her, she decided that she wants to produce it. And she's just great. She has, she has amazing instinct in general. Amazing instinct. I mean, even if sometimes you don't know exactly what she's trying to describe when she's telling you something, the instinct is always perfect. So she knows very well what she's trying to, to tell you. And um, I just love her. I mean, she's, she's wonderful. And she was very supportive in the whole process of making the film. I thought there was tremendous chemistry. It was very clear. This thing would fall like a souffle if we didn't believe between Jesse and Riz. You have to believe that. And it's so apparent there. Did they have time to develop that chemistry uh, before they got on set? Or um, did they just come on and do what actors sometimes do and just start? Um, we had a few days of rehearsals with them. Uh, but also on set, uh, in order to create that chemistry, uh, first of all, we became very good friends, all of us. So it was much easier in order to, to build that. Uh, and at the same time, um, I was trying on set to play songs. Uh, I, had it, I had selected a different song for every scene. And uh, the whole crew and cast were hearing one song, even in between the takes. That song was always connecting us even more and helping us even are more. Are those the songs that are in the movie? No, it's different songs. Uh, some of them are, but most of them are songs that I just love. And I felt that they were creating the right tone for every scene. The tone of this is so perfect. There is such a dry wit here. Some of it's just deadpan funny when, you know, like on these couples, like they're just interviewing them, like the girl who says, we have sex every day, sometimes more than that for an hour. And, and and the guy they ask, what do you like about her most? Oh, I like her hair, you know. Just delivered so perfectly, you know, not over the top, not trying to get a laugh, it's just there. Yes, we try to create something that looks very, very, very humanistic and warm, but at the same time funny. <laughs> and it has this deadpan quality in a way. Uh, but that was always the intention to create this I, I call it, as I said, uh, I, I mean, it's the melancholic smile tone that uh, we have created for this film that we had also in Apples. And uh, I think that it's something that I want to continue exploring more this kind of tone uh, in films. Yeah, you, you're going to, you said you're going to do another film dealing with identity. We follow a group of extras, background actors, because also right now um, they are trying to make them AI, all of them. Uh, <laughs> so we will follow a group of uh, background extras uh, uh, that they are playing in famous movies from 1984. Uh, the first scene starts at Terminator. And it's about how we're all trying to be protagonists in our life, but we're still extras in this world. Um, and about the roles, the different roles that we're playing and how we can find our own identity. Wow. That's great. I, you know, how do you come up with all this stuff? It's just amazing. You had two other writers on this, by the way. You don't 
do this by yourself. But I, I'm always finding the ideas. Uh, but it's always, even the new one, I mean, uh, the extras idea, it's, it's about how people are trying to be from the background in the foreground. Uh, like people right now through social media and TikTok are trying to be the, from the background in foreground. So I'm always trying to understand people around me and play with what they are doing in their life and to create something that is a little bit different. Who inspired you to go into this business? Um, the movie that made me to want to be a filmmaker was The Truman Show. It's a movie that I really love. It has an amazing prophecy about our life. And uh, for me, it has the perfect balance, the per perfect balance between comedy and drama, the perfect balance between how do you, you can create something that is high concept, but at the same time very grounded, and how you can create something that looks like dystopian, but at the same time it's so humanistic. And it's also a character-driven story. Unfortunately, a lot of conceptual stories recently care a lot about the concept and not about the characters. Christopher Stracy did the score. I was really a beautiful uh, underscore here. He's a great, great, great composer and a great talent. It's funny that he's, uh, uh, he started making movies uh, three years ago. Uh, he was doing other stuff before. And uh, for me, he's one of the next big talents here in the uh, U.S. And I hope that a lot of people will start working more with him. Beautiful. All of the uh, cinematography, the production design was perfect, unique in it. What, what were you thinking with the production design in developing that office and what it looks like? Um, with Zazu Myers that we got, who is also a super talented person, I think that uh, we tried to create something that looks really warm, very inviting for all the couples that are going there, but also because we tried to create something timeless that looks a little bit 90s, as we said, but we don't know exactly when. So we tried to create this, to give this timeless quality in everything. In all this Conceptual stories that are trying to make something very futuristic, but for me it's much, much stronger when you are creating something that is really grounded and you are playing with something that you have already seen uh, with the absence of technology and not uh, uh, Apple cell phones. Uh, there are so many wonderful movies about love that we've seen. I mean, it's a big subject in movies over the century of movies. And I looked at this movie and I said, this is truly about love. It comes through. It was very important to, to show love through glances and to create something really pure, to create all this anticipation about, to, to kiss somebody that it's happening. For me, this kiss scene is much sexier than all the sex scenes that we could have done in this movie, probably. So that's what we tried, to show something really pure. Uh, and you succeeded, 100%. Well, thank you for coming out and showing it here at the Academy. This is uh, Christoph, And uh, thank you, and good luck with the film as we go along. Thank you so much, Pete. Thank you so much. And thank you all for being here today. Thank you.